going on guys welcome back to the channel my name's Casey and this is my Jeep and on this upload it's gonna be the first part of two where I'm gonna be repairing that uh, corner damage that I have on the Jeep where I broke the tail where I broke the tail light a couple weeks ago I'm gonna start by fixing that up uh, repairing the damage we're gonna pull that dent out prime it and what I've decided to go with is some Evo aluminum corner armor skins um, it was between this and a another product from TNT customs um, they made a really cool corner armor with uh, French in taillights and recess so the taillights are actually more protected and sitting inside the rock skins a little bit more so I didn't go with the TNT ones for two reasons um, the first one was the cost they were almost four times as much as the Evo ones and uh, to me, I just wasn't feeling like the value was there to spend that much more money on the corner armor. Now that may differ a little bit for anybody who's down in the States where TNT is based out of, um, up here, to get them up here through Northridge in Canada, that was the price that I was looking at. The other factor was the time. It was gonna be six to eight weeks shipping time to get them and I didn't wanna wait around that long when Northridge had a set of these evil ones in stock and they were able to ship them out to me right away. Um, and I saved a bunch of money, so that gives me some funds to buy some other Jeep parts that well, I'll probably break something. So anyways, um, that was the reason I went with the Evo ones. I trust Evo as well. I have tons of Evo stuff on my Jeep already and it's been bulletproof, no issues with it. So they're kind of my go-to manufacturer for any parts that I need and uh, I think these will do just fine. Now, I went with the aluminum over steel. Um, I have pretty much steel everything on my Jeep and uh, this time I decided to go with the aluminum. I didn't feel like the steel added any other value to the corner armor. Um, it's heavier and I'm already getting really heavy on the Jeep. So I'm trying to look for any weight savings that I can uh, just to try to cut down because we're gonna be over 6,000 pounds here soon. So these are the aluminum version. Um, I, I think for what I need, they'll be just fine. And then also I picked up uh, Evo ships with they have this option. These are just LED tail lights made by Signal Stat. So uh, just looks like Evo rebranded, but but then they include a nice harness. It looks like it has the uh, the load resistor on here, and it will plug into the factory harness. So I uh, won't really have to do. Doesn't look like I have to do any wiring. So that's kind of nice um, that they have that with them, and uh, and they'll mount into. Uh, this space here now the thing to note with doing this is going to require some cutting of the body uh, This hole doesn't line up obviously with your factory taillight hole So it actually sits I think your factory hole is something like that So what you have to do on the body is you end up having to cut out this additional section So you mount you basically mock these up get everything lined up get all your nut certs drilled and installed and then you mark out where this round section is going to be and when you take them off you then cut out your body and then hit it with some primer and pop these guys on and then you'll have space for those round tail lights uh, the other thing to note is when you install these tail lights you want to be conscious of your uh, basically you want to be conscious of your regulations for lighting now with these, they install here. Um, so you will have a rear facing uh, red light. They don't have a backup light on them. I have a auxiliary backup lights already on the Jeep, so I'm not worried about that. And they come on automatically when I go reverse. But something to consider, and I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do yet, is where we are, you need to be able to see your brake lights and your signals from the side of your vehicle. And so these guys, are not visible from the sides. You can only see them from the rear. Um, so I'm gonna have to think about what I wanna do for putting a side marker on that ha uh, functions as a signal and basically a marker light. Um, <laughs> with the factory tail lights, you get this piece here, which is a visible from the side of the vehicle. So uh, some options I've seen is mounting something in here uh, Poison Spider makes little one inch bullet lights that I have on the front fenders. I could put something there um, or up here possibly, or maybe I'll just put nothing and see how it goes. So I just wanted to point that out because that is something that different corner skin armor has. The TNT 
um, customs one that they had, you can see the tail light from the side, the way that it's fringed in, it actually reveals some of the tail light from the side. So you don't have to deal with that. Um, there are some other aftermarket tail lights that stick out and then have a little LED on the side of them. Um, but then your tail light is sticking out and has more risk of uh, getting hit by something. So just something to consider when you're looking at those corner skins and whether or not that's going to matter to you. We are going to start off by taking care of this. This is the big problem now. We'll just unhook this. I've just zip tied this on with one zip tie and a screw is kind of loosely in here. It has been doing me just fine for uh, around town. I haven't been out off-roading. It would probably be fine off-roading, but I did borrow this from Christian. So I do want to give it back. I don't want to risk smashing it when I'm out on the trail. So we're just going to take this off. Uh, I'm going to try to scrape off with probably a wire brush as much as this paint, um, as much of this paint as I can. And I borrowed, uh, I borrowed a slide hammer, which I've never used before, but we're going to give it a try. And uh, this is what I've been told will help me uh, pull out some of this dent here. I'm not really that concerned with it down below. Mostly I'm concerned with it along the edge here because this is where the rock skin is going to sit flush and I don't want a little dent behind the top of it. So we'll try to get this pulled out as much as I can and then that way we'll have a nice clean edge along the top of the rock skin. Now the other thing that I'm going to have to deal with with this is because I've got my poison spider tire carrier uh, this has a bunch of holes drilled into the corners of the body So I'm gonna have to make sure that when I'm putting these rock skins on I'm gonna have to mark holes from the backside and drill through the rock skins to be able to mount my uh, Latch plate here back on so that will vary a little bit depending on what tire carrier you're using um, When we get into installing these corner skins, that's gonna be a little bit of a variance over standard installation, but um, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do it on mine Anyways guys, don't forget, this is probably gonna be a two-part uh, video. First is gonna be setting up, getting ready for the installation and preparing. And so make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on those notifications, then you'll see when the next video goes up. So the second video, I'll be focusing on the installation of the rock skins themselves. Uh, this video is gonna be getting ready and kind of dealing with that dent and missing paint. Um, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't mix, so you don't miss that next upload of the uh, installation of these rock skins. So what I'm gonna use to try to get this dent out is a slide hammer. I borrowed one from a friend, uh, but I've never actually used one before. So I'm not sure what the technique's gonna be, but I can see how it would help with pulling that dent out because it, you're gonna need to be able to hit it with some sort of force, but you need to be able to hit it from behind. And uh, from the looks of it, the slide hammer does just that. So uh, here, here's what it looks like. Um, it's got some hook attachments for it here. Uh, so basically it's just, oh, it's really heavy. Uh, it's just got a very heavy uh, ram on it. And then it's got an end here, which you can put these various attachments. I think probably this hook or maybe the smaller hook. Uh, basically what we want to be able to do is get this in behind here. And then we're gonna use the slide hammer to pull back out. So let's pull that out. We'll get this, uh, I think maybe this attachment will work the best. Let's get that on there and uh, see how it goes. So I've been working at this for a little bit with a slide hammer. I think I'm gonna keep going because I'm making some progress. Um, what I'm trying to do is close this gap right here. Now, I'm not sure that the way that these sit, this will completely close, no matter how much effort I put into this. Um, we've got a bit of a gap between the body line uh, along the top here. So I've read that these, are a bit challenging to get this spot really tight as it is. And uh, well, having it dented is not helping that. So let's see if we can get this, see if we can get this piece banged out a little bit more. See if we can get a little bit more flush. You can see just holding these up where I'm gonna have to cut out the taillight section. Um, 
basically everywhere in this hole. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. I'll just get mark it off with a Sharpie and then I'll use my Dremel to draw that out. So we've got some progress already. Uh, this side has come out most of the way. It's still a little bit indented where the light came, but I think that's part of the, the recessed factory part. But this has come out quite a bit. I've gotten a lot of this back out. This spot right here is really difficult to get that hook right where I want it and in behind there. But I'm gonna see if I can bring this piece, this top out a little bit more, close some of that gap. But uh, kind of boring to watch on video. Um, but uh, I'm just gonna see how I see how it goes. I'm just gonna keep working on this. Uh, taking some breaks because it's pretty tiring on the arms, but um, I'm gonna see just how much I can get this banged out uh, compared to the other side. Uh, you know, it's you know it's not a perfect bevel along here either. So I think that just the way the skins are designed, there's a bit of a gap along here. Now I can't hold the other one up to the side because I've got the latch plate in place and compare, uh, and I don't want to take this off. I don't want. I don't want to take the latch plate off until I'm ready to start working on this side because uh, that's quite a bit of work to get this plate off and uh, I want to minimize how many times I'm taking it on and off. So uh, I'm going to wait and keep working on this side, keep banging away with this slide hammer, see how it goes and hopefully I can get this corner opened up a little bit more and brought back into place where it should be. It's getting pretty pretty good. Uh, I got most of this dent out here that I was a little bit worried about and this is starting to get you know I think once I cinch this down with some ratchet straps and clamps it will uh, get real nice and tight. I think I might put a little bit more into this section right here to try to just bring this out a little bit. I was also reading that with these people if you push these in this is the factory bolt or the factory screw location. If you push these in a little bit, it allows the corner armor to uh, snug up a little bit tighter to the body because these do jut out and kind of keep it lifted away. So I'm gonna knock these in a little bit on this side. Uh, this is sort of my experimental side uh, anyways. And I'm gonna knock these in and try to bring this out just a little bit more, but you can see the skin out. See, I've worked out a lot of the, I mean, this is by no means show quality, but for my off-road rig, I've knocked out a lot of the uh, dents. The tail light actually hooks back in here now, if you try it, and would hold in place. And honestly, if I wasn't putting rock skins, put a little bit more effort into this dent and probably just smooth some of this out with a hammer. And I would paint this and it would be good enough for, for off-roading if I was going to put the factory tail lights back on. I didn't want a big, huge dent here, so. I'm gonna just try to work this little bit out here and push this guy in and, uh, and I think that's all I'm gonna do and then we're gonna wire wheel this down and then we're gonna prime it and all right I think that's about all I'm gonna do here it's uh, still a little bit dented but I'm just not able to get that slide hammer in there very well so this mostly is what I really was focusing on, getting this piece uh, out and kind of getting that shape back so that when I put the skins on there, there wasn't a massive gap caused by the dent. And I kind of just push these in a little bit. And it's some missing paint. And I think what I need to do is let's go find my Dremel, get the wire brush, and we'll just kind of knock some of this off. All right, uh, instead of the Dremel, I forgot I bought this uh, wire brush for my for my drill uh, and I have a two-speed drill so this will work really well. It has a lot of RPMs and uh, I'm just going to see how this works. With. All right, I'm just going to clean this up with some alcohol, give it a little wipe down. Sure there's no grease or anything left on it. Get all the excess paint dust. And you can kind of see, I mean, <laughs> if I wanted this to look really perfect, you know, you could probably get some body filler and deal with some of these dents. But you know what? For me, this is just fine. I'll let you guys decide how you want to repair your Jeep if you have this happen. But 
I just want to kind of get this relatively back in form. We're going to prime it now. And uh, we're going to stick those rock skins over top. So this is pretty good. Go get my primer. It's probably going to take two or three coats because it's going right on bare metal. And because it's so cold out, it's taking a long time to dry. Now, uh, this is by no means a uh, show quality finish. Uh, you guys may have higher expectations for repairing your Jeep, but this thing is uh, off-road only, pretty much my trail rig. So I'm not really gonna spend a million hours trying to make this look perfect. I'm not gonna take it to a body shop to fix this little dent. We're just gonna get that good enough, throw some primer on, like I said. Uh, you know, it looks reasonable, well, reasonably good. Uh, if you wanted, you could throw a factory tail light in here and it would be just fine. That's probably what I'll do until I can uh, get some more time to mount these skins up and shoot the second video. So I'm just gonna let this primer dry. It looks not too bad, um, but that's good enough for me. I'll let you guys decide. I'm obviously not a uh, body and paint guy. Um, if you guys have any tips for me or for anybody else that may be trying to fix some dents or dings or broken tail lights, Throw them down in the comments. Um, the comments you guys leave, I read them all. There are lots of helpful ones, some great information. Um, if you got a better way to try to fix this corner, I'm all ears, I'd like to hear it. This is how I'm gonna fix it for now and pretty much just prepping it to throw those uh, Evo aluminum rock skins on. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap up this first of two parts of repairing this tail light. I've got it all primed. I'm just gonna let that dry and cure and then we can get started installing the rock skins. Uh, like I said before, let me know what you guys think I should do for those rock skins as far as powder coating them. Should I go with the textured black? Should I go with a satin smooth black? Should I go with red? I'm gonna put trail scales over top of them so uh, this part won't matter as much. And uh, like I got a little overspray on my trail scales, whatever. Uh, these are gonna have to come off anyway, so I don't know kind of wondering what mainly what I want this piece here to look like. Do I want it black? Do I want it red? Uh, should I paint it with body color? Should I just powder coat it red like the rock rings or just continue the trend of this uh, river uh, finish black which kind of has a texture to it. That's kind of how I'm leaning and just kind of get this back corner black and I'll put colored trail scales over top of it along the top of the fender. But leave me a comment. What do you guys think? I'm not decided yet. I'd like to hear what you guys, uh, what your guys' opinions are. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave them down below. If you have any suggestions on repairing uh, body work like this, go ahead, leave a comment. Uh, that'll help out anybody else who's watching this video because I am not a professional when it comes to body work. I'm just kind of winging it and doing what I think needs to be done to get uh, my corner in a state to be able to put these rock skins on. Um, anyhow. Thanks so much for watching this week's video, guys. I will have another upload coming soon, finishing off this install and getting those Evo aluminum rock skins mounted up. Once again, thanks so much to Northridge4x4.ca. Uh, great company here in Canada, based all out of Alberta, that helps me get all of my parts. They get them to me quickly, and the guys there are really awesome to deal with, and they help me out getting these um, so I can get my Jeep back up and going. And uh, I'd love it if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, please. It really helps the videos get noticed by YouTube and then recommend it to other people and then my information can help others. And uh, that's just awesome, helping other Jeepers out. So leave a like. And if you aren't already and you enjoy the content here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Lots of new subscribers on the channel and that is awesome. Hello to anybody who is new here. Thanks so much for subscribing if you already have already. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss the second part of this installation video. It will be coming out soon. I just need to find a little bit more spare time to get these guys mounted up. They will take a bit of wrangling to get them on and get them fitted. And I really hate dealing with nut certs. Um, but I have a lot of experience because I've installed a ton of them with the fenders, the rock skins on the sides, my sliders, pretty much everything has needed them somewhere along the line. So I will have that video coming out as soon as I can guys and we will finish this off because I want these on and installed as much as anybody else. With that said, thanks so much for watching this week's video. Really appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next upload.